After posting my last video about my rear steer switch, which has quickly become the most popular monster truck sim video on my channel, there have been a number of people that have reached out asking if I could make them one. Obviously, I am more than happy to help, but I figured that the monster truck community may also benefit from a video on how to make one of these switches. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a 3D printer, an Arduino Pro Micro, a micro USB cable, a soldering iron along with some solder, a SPST toggle switch, a SPDT toggle switch, around one foot of wire, two number eight screws that are an inch and a half long, five eyelet connectors, and a 3 8 steel rod to help reinforce the entire housing. And so without any further ado, let's get into how to make this. If you look in the description, I've included a link so that you can download the STL file for the housing. Included in that file is also the bolt and the bottom plate for the housing. I used Cura to slice it, and then I included a pause at height function. What this is going to do is a printer is going to start the print, but once it reaches a specific layer, the printer will pause. This will allow us the opportunity to insert the steel rod into the structure. Then when we tell the printer to, it will resume the print. It's very similar to the idea behind steel reinforced concrete. This will make it super strong and durable. So how do you do this? Well, the first thing to do is to slice the print as you normally would. And then you go into the preview layers. And as you go through the layers and look for the channel that is being printed, and that's where the rod is eventually going to sit. And once you see that channel become covered up, go to the layer just before that. and then remember that layer number. Then you go into the settings and you're going to add the pause at height function and then you're gonna switch it over to layer number and then you're gonna enter in that layer number from before. Go ahead and make sure that supports are enabled. I like to use normal supports and make sure that I use the touching build plate option and then go ahead and re-slice that model. The next step is to fire up the printer and get it printing. And while that starts to print, we can go and we can make sure that we have that steel rod cut and ready to use as soon as the printer is ready for it. Measure out 43 millimeters on the steel rod, or <coughs> excuse me, or in the units of freedom for my mostly American audience, one inch and 692 thou. Go ahead and make that mark and get cutting. Now thanks to that pause at height function, the printer will stop automatically when it gets to the point that we want it to. And we can take that steel rod and we can insert it into the hole that was made for it. And then I usually like to use a little bit of glue to hold it down to prevent any rattling in case that sizing is just a little bit off. Now we can resume the print and we can let that finish and while that's finishing up we can start getting to work on soldering the electronics together. Now we're gonna cut five pieces of wire. We're gonna make them roughly four inches in length, and then we're going to strip the ends off of them. Once we've got our five pieces of wire with the end stripped, we're gonna take our eyelet connectors, slip the eyelet over the stripped end of the wire, and we're going to crimp them together. We're then going to take our switches, unscrew the screws from them, and we're going to screw in our eyelet connectors as shown in the video here. Now here's where we get into the fancy parts. We're going to take the Arduino and solder the wires to it. Each one of the holes along the side of the Arduino is called a pin, and the lettering next to the pin identifies what the pin is called. Here's a diagram showing the pinout for the Arduino Pro Micro. We're going to take one wire from the toggle switch with three pins. This is a switch that's going to be used to steer the truck left and right. And with the indent on that switch facing the left, we're going to take the wire on the right and we're going to connect the end of that wire into pin 14. Once the wire is inserted into that pin, go ahead and solder it in place. Now take the wire on the left and do the same thing only this time connecting it to pin 18. And take that final remaining wire on that switch. This will be from the middle pin and connect it into any pin labeled GND, which stands for ground. With that out of the way, the next step will be to connect the switch that handles the auto self-center device. Take any wire from that switch, it doesn't matter which one, and connect that wire of choice to pin A3. And as always, solder that in place. 
Now we're gonna take the final remaining wire and we're gonna solder it to any pin labeled GND. Now it is time to do the software portion of this project. I have linked the code in the description below. Open the Arduino IDE. I have also linked that in the description below. And now we're going to attach the USB cable to the Arduino. I usually like to use a small amount of glue on the connector to help reinforce that connection, as this is a bit of a weak point in the Arduino Pro Micro. Now we're going to connect that Arduino to the computer. In the Arduino IDE, go to Tools, Board, Arduino AVR Boards, and select Arduino Micro. With that selected, we're now going to go back to the Tools toolbar, and we're going to go to Port, and we're going to select the Arduino that we just plugged into the computer. This is likely going to be the only option that you have here. I, however, have multiple Arduinos plugged into my computer, so if you have multiple Arduinos plugged into the computer, you're probably going to know how to figure out which one it is that you just plugged in. In the top left, there's a button that looks like an arrow. Go ahead and click that button to upload the code to the Arduino. The Arduino may disconnect and reconnect to the computer during this process, and the LED lights will start to flash. The next step is to assemble everything we have together. Go ahead and remove the supports from the housing. And slide the steer switch into the housing and tighten the nut down to secure it in place. Now we can repeat that process for the auto self center switch. And now we can print both the bottom plate and the bolt. I have linked the STL files for both of these in the description below. Once the plate is finished printing, we can duck everything into the cavity in the housing, then insert the plate into the housing and use the two screws to secure everything into place. The final step is to screw the bolt into the housing. And something that's good to remember here is that the first time you thread the bolt in, it will be the hardest, as there are any possible burrs or imperfections in the threads that are being removed as you thread it in for the first time. And for those of you who prefer BeamNG, we've got you covered as well. To use BeamNG mode, you'll need to disconnect the USB cable from the computer. Turn off the auto self center and steer to the right and hold it there as you plug it back in. Once it's connected to the computer, you can let go of the switch and it will now be ready for use in BMNG. To switch it back to Rigs of Rods, just unplug it and plug it back in. And that's all. If you need any assistance along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you end up making one of these, please let me know, I would love to hear about it. I've also made some other cool monster trucks and pieces that you can check out in the playlist here. I'm always looking for new ideas for things to create, so if you think something would be cool, feel free to let me know. And once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, and as always, keep on monster trucking.